yeah, you'll have these sort of every mile or so along the National Cycle Network. Um, okay, and what did you call this? This yes, sort of millennium? Millennium mile post. So yeah, they, okay. they came in at the at the turn of the millennium. Okay. Um, and uh, Sustrans undertook a big project to sort of refurbish them and spruce them up and we yeah. work with our volunteers to um, to paint them and to maintain them. It's a really great way to get people involved all across the National Cycle Network uh, to get to, to sort of know and love their network and help to maintain it. So, brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Well, okay. we are on our way to our next stop. Who are That's we going right. to go see now? So we are on our way to Coley Park. Um, this is a new, newly finished uh, project. Well, phase one has finished. So we're going to go and meet Helen um, from the Water of Leith Conservation Trust. And she will tell you all about the project. Uh, Sustrans was delighted to be involved with it and uh, help fund part of the project. Um, thanks to funding through Transport Scotland as well. So yeah, let's go check it out. Let's go meet Helen. Yeah. So I'm Helen Brown and I'm Trust Manager at the Water of Leith Conservation Trust um, and we look after the river, Edinburgh's river basically, mm -hmm. uh, from its source to the sea, looking after the water itself, cleaning it up, pulling out all the litter and rubbish, uh, but also looking after the walkway and the active travel routes alongside, you know, keeping them wide and broad and fixed and um, well maintained, you know, for people to use. So one of the, the, the ideas here as well is we're going to make a connection as a kids play park and little local park up there. So we're going to make an artistic connection through Super. here and make some sort of crossing, yeah. um, which will uh, you know, kind of highlight this to people that people are likely to cross. And the idea is that the pedestrians We'll enjoy more walking on the waterside path because it'll be safe and it'll be level and obviously you can see the river better which leaves the cycle path a little bit more for the the more active travel shall we say or faster faster route so um, we've we've not got the funding yet for the um, the artworks look into Sustrans art routes for okay. that <laughs> yeah, I have to talk to yeah 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 um, uh, so um, so that's uh, that's, I mean, I submitted one last year, but uh, anyway, I won't, we won't go into the we semantics of the, it. The administrative <laughs> side, side of, of that. Uh, um, good. And well, a little bit further up as well, part of the sort of, um, you know, different kind of active areas we want to put in are like a little skate area. Yeah. Uh, so a sort of teen hangout, skate features, social seating space. Um, but it sits on top of the sewer. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so we've got, some surveyors out today just trying to work out what pipes are where because okay. Scottish water don't know. Wow, so brilliant. that's helpful. So yeah, so this uh, this is a work in progress, this side of the park. Uh, but it's really nice, you know, to immediately finish phase one. Yeah. And to have started on phase two. Phase two. So, yeah. you know, you kind of keep got the momentum. momentum with you. Yeah. yeah. And people are also it's used it, to the, the disruption. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's that's I think that's everybody knows what's that it's happening. Yeah, that's quite quite important, I think. All systems go. So yeah, so this area is um, the area that we're hoping to put the skate features in. So there'll be kind of social, Gaudi style social seating up there. Wow. Um, in the space. Oh, and then like a little so like performance. The young girls wanted a performance area. Yeah. Obviously for TikToks. Uh, and then the skate features <laughs> will be modern. kind of here. Uh, <laughs> with 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 beds planted beds as well so we can put in um you know sort of you know well, different sort of wildflowers and herbs and stuff yeah. the, the original idea that they'd like they said they'd like to grow like stuff you could eat in them yeah. but yeah. i was like oh, that's quite difficult you have to maintain that that's it. Yeah, <laughs> so well, so, so if we get get to uh, get uh, some gardening lessons for the young people as well but um you know they've been really involved in the process um, you know, it helped to lead the design and they did want somewhere that was much more specifically for them than, you know, general sort of gentrification and they were like, you know, we don't want to sit there and look at a river, we want to talk to our mates. Yeah. They don't want to look one way, they want to look yeah. at each other, you So see. what's the thinking then in terms of the design? To so, well it's all been through planning, we've just got planning permission for it, which is great. Uh, so up on the top section there, that's where the social seating is going to be, so a big sort of sweep round uh, and then the performance area they will probably have to keep the steps and then uh, here like a kind of bowl with an arch and then on that side they'll just be the 
the rails, the grinding rails. Okay, okay all right. Is that for the skaters? Don't really know what I'm talking about. But it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's small people on wheels. Well, yeah. not small people, actually, because a lot of the skaters are in their 30s yeah. uh, now, so they're not so not so young. Um, but, yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not a skate park, but because it's not big enough to be one, but, you know, it'll be, you know, a nice it's area where you area. can, yeah, you can do some skills and get on your BMX or your, or your scooter. So if we just... Uh, Go the other side of the bridge. That's where phase one was. What's the time frame for it, Helen? When well, I have I haven't got the money for the skate area. Okay. Everything else has been relatively plain sailing to get funding for, but yeah. I'm 75 grand shy for the skate area. I just can't. There's no. I missed the deadline for Sports Scotland because of the planning permission. Um, I couldn't submit it until we got planning permission and we got planning permission on like, you know, the 1st of May or something. And of course the deadline for applications was the 1st of April. So we were a bit like, uh, never mind. So yeah, we'll... Uh, so does that then hold everything else up? Uh, well, no, because I can, we can do the bits in phases um, and it would be a very bespoke uh, project. So... Yeah, this is the wow. this is the big transformation space, this is it. and this has been our big project. Um, well, really, it's been kind of nearly four years in the making, really, from co public consultation, which happened during COVID. Um, it was this was just like a giant concrete slab. There was bit, there was a container. It was very run down, very neglected, prone to a lot of antisocial behaviour, um, and it didn't really have an identity. It was a it was a well used active travel route, but the past surface was terrible. Um, a lot of cobbles, a lot of slipping. Uh, so we wanted to tie it in with other investment that's happening in the Leith Connection project, um, and also, you know, give the space a bit of an identity. You know, make it, you know, usable um, for active travellers, but also just as a local park. Uh, Leith is one of the most densely populated parts of Scotland, um, and one of the most socially deprived. So you know green space is a huge premium um and having a quality space to kind of hang out in um you know is very important for for local people yeah. so uh so yeah so we we tr transform the space here mm -hmm. we've got little benches we've changed the riverside path to like a kind of amphitheater there so you can kind of sit down and enjoy the the route and then you've got the bottom path there where you've got benches uh, with bays beside them so you know you can either park your bike or your buggy and you're not um, blocking the path which is often what happens when people put on benches next right. to paths your feet are sticking out in the, yeah. the the cycleway and also along here this we've changed the route you can see it kind of goes up out of what was the car park um, and that was all cobbles and the car park cars used to actually block the route um, so if people were trying to even go that way the cars would be parked all the way across the park so we banned the cars bar four disabled spaces um, and uh, you know created a nice smooth route up out onto Coburg Street which I think is where they're rerouting the NCN um, route 75 out that way but it needs to time with a few other bits of investment I think um, and yeah, and just smoothed off all the other paths. People used to cut through the trees as well, which was really annoying, like a desire line, mm -hmm. just to kind of get away from all the people who were on yeah. the path. Uh, so we did a few modifications to kind of, um, you know, just a mound and a few giant rocks to stop people doing that. And, you know, they seem to be sticking to the path. Um, and then biodiversity wise, we've sowed a couple of meadows, got some planters, done a few trees, a little hedgerow um, and a bit further along as well. There's a, a biomatrix platform. There's one opposite us here and there's one over there, which is we created habitat in the water um, for, you know, the wildfowl and for fish underneath. So that's it yeah. in a nutshell. Fantastic. Coley Park. Yeah. And I suppose that, you know, creating, you know, valuable open space such as this, you know, giving, you know, the public an opportunity to reconnect with the water is very much a part of, of what the, your mission is in terms of Absolutely. water quality. Absolutely, 100%, yeah. 100%. And that was actually that, you know, the top priority of the project. The number one thing that people wanted from the public consultation was improved habitat on the water and to improve their connection with it you know so you know you don't turn your back on the river you turn your face to it yeah. um and you know everyone loves you know the swans and the goosanders and the ducks and everything here you know they've all got their own bit of personality you know people come down and feed them um and i think you can see the swans are actually coming over you sat down where's your picnic i yeah. want to eat um so 
you know and there's obviously a lot of you know kind of you know dog walkers like to to use the space as well so uh so yeah that connection and hopefully if they see it more and they appreciate more they'll learn to respect it and won't drop their litter in it yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, Amelia, I'll have you step into, into frame here, too. Uh, talk a little bit about, you know, the partnership uh, with Sustrans and, and trying to, you know, facilitate and help, you know, potentially help. Um, yeah, so no, this is exactly what um, Sustrans and our vision for the National Cycle Network is about. So it's about connecting people in an easy way to get from A to B, but it's about so much more. It's about place making. It's about providing a sense of um, community and belonging so to be able to partner uh, on this project was yeah it was a, a really a, an easy fit I yeah, think yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah a, a really really positive collaboration that we're really happy to be involved with so obviously this is part of uh, Route 75 um, so yeah, I think it's all really come together quite well. Well, and it almost yeah. it's almost providing like a kind of destination at the end of Route 75, yeah. because uh, you know it's sort of just otherwise you sort of fizzle out, doesn't it? It's like oh, I've arrived yeah. at Ocean Terminal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. a shopping centre. You know, it's much more you know to kind of like right, I'm actually in Leith now. This is like a little gateway now, you know, to to Leith and the shore. That's it, and that, I think that's the thing with active travel. So it does support those sort of functional commuter trips, um, people getting to work or getting to the shops, but also it is to, to be able to have that sort of places and attractions on the way and to create destinations. People might sort of come here for the first time and give cycling a go and maybe become more confident and then become more sort of regular users of active travel. And, to be able to sort of encompass those opportunities together and through one project is, you know, is spot on and exactly the sort of thing that we want to support and do more of. So, yeah. But one of the best things I saw actually once we'd reopened the, 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 the tar route through the car park, which you'll see a bit further on, is that there was a mum teaching her child how to ride their bike yeah. down through there because it's, it's a gentle cambered slope you know, onto a straight bit of path so they could get the momentum up and do it and then back up to the top. She was videoing him. And that would have never happened. You know, they, I can't think of another space in Leith where you could do that safely with a child, you know, because there was car parks and it was cobbles. It was literally like that. And then immediately after they went, there was three elderly gentlemen in three mobility scooters riding side by side, like Easy Rider, you know, kind of down the path. And I just thought that... That small that's change that's, that's, has made a yeah, huge difference huge. from, you know, removing the cars and, you know, straightening out the cobbles. We didn't take all the cobbles out at all. There's, you know, the heritage sort of feature is still there. Um, but, uh, but, you know, you've got that, you know, kind of route. Yeah. No, it's so it's so important, I think, for kids to be able to have a positive experience learning to cycle. Yeah. You know, if you're going straight onto busy roads with traffic, it, it's just such yeah, a different yeah, yeah. experience. It could be really off-putting. Um, so, yeah, to be able to sort of encourage that, I think, is yeah. is spot on and exactly what we... There's a lot, lot of people around here as well use the cargo bikes yeah. um, for transporting their children around yeah. and getting to yeah. school. Yeah. And Victoria Primary School, you know, you can connect state onto there, straight up to yeah. the Victoria Path, and you don't have to cross the road at all to get to school, yeah. you know, which is, you know, a huge bonus for, so, for the families. And sometimes we sort of think, oh, you wouldn't know that you're in the city, but we are in the city. This yeah, is yeah, yeah. part of the city. <laughs> the city doesn't have to just be those busy roads with traffic. Yeah. This very much is the city. And, you know, we've just come from Collington, actually, all the way through town. So had a bit of a hairy bit and sort of Haymarket, but then on to CC Wells. So, yeah, largely, largely quite a, a safe and accessible experience, I think. And not too much user conflict with cars. So. Yeah. And you mentioned safety and you mentioned earlier also placemaking and creating spaces for people so it's not more than just a transportation corridor but it also you know the, the thought comes to mind that that sense of safety especially for uh, you know for moms with kids and the elderly and uh, females a single female riding through a space is that when you have a vibrant public space mm. there's a there's much more of a sense of comfort and safety yeah. along that line so it really enhances it all the way around absolutely and that again was one of the big issues you know was site safety particularly at night here mm -hmm. um, you know I mean the the flat development opposite did help because now this area is overlooked mm -hmm. but it was very much a no-go area you would not right. come down here at night the the you put LED lighting in the, the street lights so they're much brighter and along the riverside path we've put in just the solar spots mm -hmm. just to kind of you know mark the way we didn't want to illuminate it. it doesn't need to be illuminated there's enough sort of ambient street light um, around here um, but 
the only safe way is to actually just get more people using the path. Yeah. And yeah. if yes. you've got more users, you've got more eyes on it. Yeah. And that's why we chose that spot for the, um, the skate area as well. The police advised us because uh, it's visible from the bridge. It's yeah. visible from the cycle path. So if the young people do get into trouble or they hurt themselves or, you know, they're fighting or whatever, then people will see them. Mm. And, you know, interventions can happen. They're not hidden away, you know. Any final uh, thought? And also, where can people learn more about your organization? So, I mean, we've got a website, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Okay. Um, I mean, you just search Water of Leith and we're the first thing that pops up. Um, I mean, for Edinburgh as a city, the Water of Leith walkway is, you know, is a fantastic place to visit. Everyone just goes to Dean Village um, and you might, I don't know if you cycle through that way, probably not. Um, but, uh, you know, there's, there's the 13 mile route to explore and you'll see a very different side of Edinburgh, a very green side of Edinburgh, mm -hmm. you know, and a river that is just as historically important as the castle, in my opinion. <laughs> I, I love this integration here with uh, a little bit of seating. Yeah. You've got the bike racks here, but then you also have these planters. And so, I mean, just it's just brilliant. Every opportunity to add a little bit of green and uh, work with nature. And when we swing around, we just see nature all around us, including the, the swans here. Little babies. Very nice. Baby signets out as well. Yeah. Yeah, it is a really beautiful spot. And I think they've taken yeah. so much care with the design. So yeah. um, those spaces along there there's benches where you've got spaces for wheelchair users next yeah. to them so it really is sort of thinking about um, just creating that welcoming space that really is for all users to be able to enjoy. Very good. Okay where are we off to next? So now we are going to carry on down the path and we're going to see what we can find in mm -hmm. Leeds so there, there are more plans to develop active travel that way we've got mm -hmm. a pedestrianized street that we're going to go and check out okay. um, so yeah let's go and see what we can find. Let's go do it. Let's do it. <laughs> yes. I love the swans. This is so cool. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. Well, until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.